today we are in Camden, Arkansas, visiting Lockheed Martin Missile and Fire Control. And joining me is Mark Janice, who is an ESH manager, and Nelson Hernandez, who is an environmental engineer. So thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. There are so many exciting things happening here at Lockheed Martin in Camden. But first, can you tell me a little bit about what you all do here? Sure. Yeah. Uh, we're a manufacturing facility for missiles and vehicle production, uh, final assembly, testing, uh, storage. Um, those are our major things that are going on right now from a high level. How long have y'all been here in Camden? Oh, roughly since uh, 1978. Wonderful. So beyond just building uh, vehicle systems and missile systems, y'all are so busy with sustainability and recycling. So can you touch on some of the efforts that you're doing here? Sure. Uh, two of the latest initiatives that we have done our uh, LEED silver certification for two of our office buildings uh, for the, late, the, the, the newest uh, new construction facilities. Um, part of that, it's a, in total area, it's about 35,000 square feet between the two. Um, the first one we received in 2022 and, and the last one we received this year. And uh, part of the aspects that have to be considered are things like sustainable landscaping, um, energy reduction initiatives um, or, or energy efficient initiatives and um, the, the latest and greatest as far as sustainable construction materials. As well. How long is that process to get that certification? From planning to the time we receive certification it takes about two years. Well and I think Let's go dive in and learn a, uh, learn a little bit more about what you all do, and let's go see some fun things. Let's go through it. So where are we right now? This is our, our CLIC building. Um, stands for Camden Launcher Integration Center. Wonderful. Well, also, last year, y'all got an exciting award. Y'all got the Arkansas Recycling Coalition Award for all of your efforts. So congratulations on that. Thank you. So what does your recycling process look like and when did it kind of start? Well, for us, the, the recycling process starts at the very beginning before we even get the materials or the products. So we're already evaluating what's going to potentially come to the site and we're finding vendors, we're finding um, local vendors in the state of Arkansas uh, to see if we can't recycle that or reuse it or however we can process it. Uh, but the, the trick is we're, we're starting at the very beginning of that process. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what are some of the materials that y'all recycle? You mentioned precious metals out of paint. Did I understand yes. that correctly? Um, we have a, a pretty substantial painting operation here at the site. Um, and part of that, we, we apply silver containing paints. Um, we accumulate and, and, and uh, store the waste from a uh, painting system clean outs, from change out of paint filters, uh, from refurbishment operations for which we do a, a touch up or we add a component that may have a silver containing part, um, and other other smaller operations that, that use precious metals containing materials. So what do some of those look like? Uh, this here is actually the paint filter, it is a, a portion of it. Um, they come on rolls and they're, they're a lot wider, a lot longer, uh, but, but we were able to cut out a portion just to show you what it looks like. Um, the silver containing component of the paint is, is pretty indicative with when, when you look at the paint filter um, because of the, of the dark gray color to it. So this, this, this dark gray color, when you see it, we know that um, the particular painting operation that has a silver containing portion to it. Wow, and I think it's also impressive. I've never seen a paint filter or something like this for, so that's really interesting what this process looks sure. like. Absolutely. And we also have uh, additional, um, we've expanded the program over the years. The, the program started in about 2012 and in and, and late 2012, uh, started it off with one, uh, waste liquid stream and now we have it expanded it to about seven or eight different waste streams and um, gone beyond just silver containing paint liquids to silver containing solids and also gold containing waste streams and one of the gold containing streams it, it's a very small component 
uh, to the, I'll, I'll pour some out here, to the overall precious metals program, um, but, but like any of the others, it is very important I'll let you take a couple there. And these are um, what's called ACM shorting pins. These are used not for the actual operation of the, of the ACM or the attitude control motor, but for the, it's, it's a, a preventive safety measure to prevent uh, electrical flow. So these are used during the handling, uh, the transportation and the storage of the other components. Okay, okay. And as we integrate them into the product, um, they're, they're removed and these are actually the newest waste stream that we have, precious metals waste stream that we have. Um, and they, they, they store them in small boxes and we send about nine to 10 pounds a year. Wow. It's a great example of the level of detail they're looking at to do recycling here though. Yeah, I think it's incredible because there are so many different ways to recycle at so many different scales. And it's been very interesting to see how different manufacturing facilities have found different ways for them to implement recycling. Sure. It's so incredible to see the difference right. everywhere we go. And how we do it, Mark mentioned it, we like to, to look for local vendors first, local vendors and small small businesses and small vendors. Um, we are we are in a rural location, so it's it's pretty difficult to find options here. Sometimes we have to go to Little Rock. We have several vendors in Little Rock. Um, and then like for the precious metal stream, sometimes we have to uh, go somewhere north of Little Rock. And, and in this case, we've gone to the state of Illinois to find a precious metals reclamation vendor. Wow. Do you, do you think that there will be more recycling facilities that can handle that coming up? Maybe some closer to Arkansas? We would love for the for that it would be nice. particular market to expand. And um, if we're able to work with, with, with more local vendors, absolutely. Wonderful. Because a lot of the cost is the transportation to get things back and forth. So if we could reduce that down, it would be great for everybody. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, let's head on to the next place. All right. All right. So we're on the test track for the vehicles, which is so cool. But also, y'all have some unique and cool aspects to your recycling and sustainability efforts. So can you touch on what some of those unique aspects are? Sure. Uh, probably the most unique for us is the Precious Metals Reclamation Program. We have talked about that. Um, another unique aspect is the fiberglass recycle. Uh, we started the process of, of vetting fiberglass recycling in 2018. Uh, we were able to complete the first shipment in March of 2022, so March of last year. Um, it, it, it was a, a very long process uh, as, as far as the vetting goes. Due to the, the, the nature of fiberglass, it wasn't necessarily deemed to be the, the most recyclable or, or most wanted material for recycling. Um, but we were able to work with outside uh, parties and outside entities to ultimately find a vendor in Tampa, Florida who is willing to process the material for us. Wow, wow. Uh, that's definitely not a material that you would consider whenever you're thinking recycling. Sure. So that's really neat that you are doing that with fiberglass. So what would your environmental impact look like without your sustainability and recycling efforts that you've implemented? Uh, well, we, to summarize, we have recyclables, uh, recyclable operations or, or, or vendors set up for um, commingled waste or single stream waste for the precious metals containing materials, uh, for used oil, universal waste, for wood. Uh, wood is a very significant component of our recycling program. Uh, with all that taken out, uh, we would landfill based on, on last year's uh, numbers about two and a half million pounds of material. Wow. Um, and current, wood was about 1.3 million of that, so right. I mean, it's, it's quite a bit. Y'all's efforts are gigantic, so thank you Large. for what you were doing. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Well, and my last question, start with Mark. All right. What's your favorite part of your job? The people. The people of Camden, uh, and this is a family here. Um, it's the culture they have. It, you know, and being from outside of Camden and marrying into it, it's been great. Um, you know, they'll take you right in and it's just like coming to my second home. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Well, what about you, Nelson? Uh, for me, it, it is, of course, the people. I've had the opportunity, the opportunity to work with some great folks. Um, they are probably the faces of our ESH department, but, but two to mention are Roy Beasley and Sean Bradford. They are chemical waste handlers, and ultimately, when it comes down to it, they help to drive the program, our recycling program. Um, th those, those two gentlemen are, are, are probably the most influential. They do the heavy lifting for sure. They definitely do the heavy lifting uh, with, the help of, with the help of forklifts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for me, being an environmental engineer, I, I love the job. I love, I love being an environmental engineer. Um, just from the, from the ability to contribute towards sustainability initiatives um, through, through the corporation, through the, here with the site, and, and just to do it for Lockheed Martin. Um, Lockheed Martin's a great company, helping to support uh, the, the, the efforts for, for really back in freedom. And, and just, just to be able to do it for them, is, it, for, to me, it's amazing. Well, I think all of us here, we also love our job to your point of our impact, whether we see it directly or not, environmental, uh, you know, sustainability and efforts, it can be such a rewarding part of all of our jobs. And so I'm right there with y'all. I love my job and I can truly tell that y'all love y'all. <laughs> y'all have a fun, exciting job for sure. It's interesting. So, well, thank you again for joining the You Ought to Know show. Stay tuned for more episodes, more highlights of businesses, some DIYs and some fun projects any community can do for their community. Thank you. <laughs>